We ended up seeing a couple of weeks ago that Kamala Harris went on the Call Her Daddy podcast. Okay. I've never heard of that podcast. It was a very softball, very short interview that was given over there. And Joe Rogan ended up having Donald Trump on just the other day for a full three hours. Three hours, President Trump was on with Joe Rogan. I ended up going, and I never listened to Joe Rogan because I'm like, three hours, man, that's just a little bit too long for an interview for me. You know, I like, you know, back when David Letterman went interview somebody, that right there, you know, or even Craig Ferguson, for that matter, I'm sitting there going, that's, you know, I I like that. And, And, you know, I would also watch Larry King Live, you know, some of those old things and watch those interviews. And it's like, okay, that's about as much as I can handle. I usually can't do three hours, but I ended up watching the full three hours yesterday. And the thing that shocked me is when that clip was posted on YouTube, not even a clip, the full three hour interview, it had been up for five hours and got 12 million views within five hours. That's unheard of. Let me see what it's up to now. Let's see what it's up to now. Let's see. Joe Rogan, Donald Trump on YouTube here. Let's see here. That is currently up to 27 million views just one day after it's been posted. 27 million views. I got to ask, is YouTube going to go and put that into the top 10 videos viewed this week. You know how YouTube uh, likes, uh, how how YouTube doesn't necessarily care for Trump, doesn't necessarily care for conservatives. If you go and you look at the top 10 in YouTube, you go and you look at that chart, is, is that chart even still on the YouTube? I don't even know. But you go and you look at it and it's like, this is stuff that's doesn't have any sort of substance. It's like we are going to take a bunch of beach balls and throw them off a mountain. You know, I mean, that's basically the kind of stuff that you get in the top 10. It's like 11 million people have watched this this week. This is 27 million in one day. 27 million for three hours. Three hours. This is huge because I know a lot of people have been talking about how the new media has taken over the traditional media of of television, such as CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, CBS, ABC, and all the rest of the alphabet soup. People talk about how it is that the new media has taken. And I say, you know, I just don't see that. I don't see it yet because, you know, you go and you see, you know, for instance, whatever the big TV show is right now, what is it? The new doctor or whatever it is. You got like 7 million people going and watching the newest episodes when they come out and they only have an hour's time to go and watch it to get counted into the, into the Nielsen ratings. I say, I don't think the new media is there. I think it's a much different user. I think it's a much different kind of thing. I have to say that I've kind of reversed course on this when seeing that a three hour long interview with the former president gets 27 million views in 24 hours. I have to say that it's very possible that the new media is the new legacy media. When you look at numbers, when you look at ratings, I don't know how it relates into advertising revenue. I know I've gotten videos on YouTube that have had, you know, a couple of thousand of views, you know, mainly clips on music related things. And, you know, I I couldn't make like, you know, if I do a Van Halen story, that's just, you know, shocking stuff, new stuff that's come out. I can make like $74 on that one clip from Rock Talk Live. You know, hey, that's, that's pretty cool. So maybe it correlates. I don't know. I would love to see the ad revenue that uh, Joe Rogan ended up getting off of this. I would love to see that because that right there would give me a pretty good scope. But, you know, in terms of 
reaching an audience. This right here, what happened the other day is unprecedented. It's unprecedented because I don't even looked at the, the numbers on Spotify because that's Joe Rogan's main thing is Spotify. I don't use Spotify. I'm an Apple music guy. I use Apple podcasts. I have never jumped on the, the Spotify bandwagon. Spotify confuses the hell out of me. I think that's more for the younger generation other than myself. But I guarantee you that those numbers are also in the millions as well. Maybe not quite what they are on YouTube. But I would dare to say there's probably been about 40 million people who have listened to watch this video, watch this interview, and there's people going and sharing it on many other platforms as well. You have Twitter, you have, um, you have Facebook, you have, you know, not only Spotify, as I mentioned before, but you have rumble, you have, you know, uh, some of these other video streaming services as well. And I guarantee you the numbers have been pretty good on those as well. I haven't looked at what it is on rumble. I guarantee you it's, it's on rumble probably several times. And then you have the various commentators that are going and grabbing clips of it as well. So, you know, you're looking at somewhere around a hundred million people have probably seen something, have seen some clip on this that is more than just a two minute talking point that you tend to get from legacy debates and legacy media that is edited all to hell. This is uncut. I want us to compare this to <coughs> a week after Kamala Harris went on 60 minutes, an interview that she had to take off three days to study for, for a short, what was it? 10 minute long after it was finally edited up 10 minute long interview. She had to take three days off to study for this with getting nothing but softball questions from individuals that really like her that are really pushing for her to become the next president of the United States. Three days off in preparation for this. Now, when you have to take three days off in preparation for a short 10 minute long interview, you got to ask yourself, is this person, the person that we want in there making decisions on the fly when America is attacked? Do we want somebody like that making the decisions? That's neither here nor there. I'm looking at the ratings of this whole thing. After a week, after a week, she failed to get 500,000 views on the 60 Minutes YouTube channel. In a week, Donald Trump gets 27 million being interviewed by, by uh, Joe Rogan within a day. This right here is, and it was, and I think it was a very good interview. I think it was, I think it was very good. It was very, it was a conversation. It was very free flowing. You get to know about a person in something like that, as opposed to give me the questions beforehand, give me three days to study for it. Kamala Harris will not appear on Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan has come out today and said, well, it's not true that she hasn't said that she is not coming on, but we don't have anything booked with her. She's not going to sit down for a three hour long interview. It's not going to happen. Okay. So, you know, we can, even though Joe Rogan says that, you know, she, she hasn't said she's not coming on. She's not coming on. She's not going to do that. She would have to study for three months for a, just a regular conversation. Is that somebody that you want in, in line for foreign policy? I don't think so. But Donald Trump, who is quite a bit older than Kamala Harris, is the new media president. He's doing things that Barack Obama, who is several years younger than President Trump, President Trump is doing things close to the age of Ronald Reagan in the realms of new media that people many years his junior 
have not realized yet that Joe Rogan is the guy that you want to interview you if you are going to be running for president. He's the guy that you want to have those conversations with. And this is something that I think is really going to make a big splash for Donald Trump. And I think it's going to help him out greatly that he has done this. And these numbers right here, man, you can't deny it in comparison to Kamala Harris because every time Kamala Harris goes up there to speak, she doesn't answer a question. Now Trump goes and does do the walk around when he's asked a question, but then he finally makes his way back and answers the question. You know, he's going in, he's like me. He's one of those guys that says, okay, you know, you got to understand the whole scene. You got to understand why it is that I think this way. You got to understand all of these things. So I get where he's coming from in terms of this, but you ask Kamala Harris, what it is that she's going to do for the economy. She, her answer is going to be, I grew up in a middle-class family. I worked at McDonald's. No, you didn't. Um, I know what it's like to struggle. I have gone and talked with many people on the campaign trail about the struggles, and we got to understand that America is a place of opportunity, that we need to protect our democracy, that this is... What the hell does that have to do with the economy? What is it that you are saying? What are you saying? Um, Wendy says, oh, hell no, that. Uh, <laughs> oh, Wendy, Wendy. Uh, that B gotta go. <laughs> I hate that. Yeah. <laughs> Why can't this just go? <laughs> I Hey, hey, hey. It's very possible she'll be gone in November. Okay. It's very possible, when Wendy. She did nothing to... <laughs> I agree with you on all of that, Wendy. I agree with you on all of that. But um, we got to give some analysis on the situation because, you know, one of the things that we have to understand is when we look at things like this, okay, we go and we look at these numbers that are coming in from the various interviews and we go and we compare those things. When we go and compare how many followers each of them have on social media for their campaigns, for their official, you know, uh, election pages on the internet. And I pointed this out four years ago. Joe Biden had like 3 million people, you know, going and following him. Trump had like 40 million. When stuff like that happens, you cannot tell me that there were not some shenanigans involved. You can't tell me that. When you look at 27 million views in 24 hours, and then you look at not even 500,000 views in a week, if something happens here during this election, you know there is some funny business going on. You know that is the case. Okay? So this right here, I think this was a huge win for Trump. I think this was absolutely huge for his campaign. I think there's many people that are sitting there watching this that have come across it because it has been such a cultural phenomenon for him to go and do a three-hour conversation with Joe Rogan. And everybody's going to see this. You know, 27 million people in, in one day. That's unprecedented. I think that this right here is going to be the thing that really pushes him over the top. If our election is fair, the thing that you are going to see is a tidal wave. And this right here should be something that those who run again in four years, whether it be J.D. Vance, whether it be Ron DeSantis, whether it be whoever, they need to take note of this. They need to take note of how culturally impactful this was for President Trump to say, 
piss off 60 Minutes. But say yes to the alternative media and Joe Rogan. You'll see how it is that that really worked in his favor. I think this is something that could definitely be analyzed by political scientists, by, you know, journalists, people in the media for years to come. And this right here could be the thing that breaks the back of traditional media. This could really be the thing because again, I was a non-believer for many years thinking that YouTube and, um, you know, rumble podcasts, all of these things are really the new media that is up and coming. That is going to overtake the legacy media. Never thought that would be the case after seeing this. I think it very well is the case. I don't think it's quite there yet, but this right here, this was a turning point. This right here was a turning point.